everyone. Hope you guys are doing well at home, safe at home. I'm so glad that we all met together for another session of respiration. Yes, it's a part two of respiration. We already discussed respiration part one in my last video and that was all about cellular respiration. Yes, we have discussed about how we extract energy. Yes, how we extract energy from digested food by the process of assimilations. And we have all discussed in our last session, in our last video about cellular respiration. Yes, guys, today I'm so excited because today we are going to discuss about how respiration takes place in us, in human beings. So I'm so excited. So let's get started. So before entering into the respiratory system of animals, let me discuss the respiratory system in plants. Yes, guys. Plants also respire. Yes or no? Plants also respire. They take the carbon dioxide for preparation of food by the process of photosynthesis. We all know that. Yes, plants also require energy. Because in case of plants, number of processes even takes place. They, take, they prepare their own food by photosynthesis. Transpiration takes place. Translocation takes place. All these processes are taking place in plants. So they also require energy. And how will they take the energy? In the same way, by respiration, they will prepare their food. They will take the carbon dioxide. They will prepare the food. They will take the energy. And hence, 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 Plants also participates in respiration. But how? From the childhood, we know that we undergo the respiration process involving breathing. We breathe through our nose, we have lungs. So, we easily inhale oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide. But where are the respiratory organs in plants? Yes? Have you ever seen the respiratory organs in plants, guys? Let me know. If you have any idea regarding the respiratory organs, let me know in the comment section below. Yes? So, let me tell you how plants take parts in respiration. How plants take the carbon dioxide. Yes, in plants what happen? They also require energy. So, they have got three respiratory organs. So, plants respire through three ways. Yes, the first one, root, the second one by leaves and the third one by stem. Root, stem, leaves are the three respiratory organs in plants through which they take the carbon dioxide and gives out the oxygen. Understood? How many respiratory organs are there? Three guys, three, three. What are those? Root, stem and leaves. So let's first discuss about how respiration takes place in case of roots. Roots. We all know. Where are roots present guys? Under the soil? Yes. So root has got some hair like structure. You all have observed. And that hair like structure in the roots are called root hairs. Yes. The hair like structure which is present in the roots is called as your root hair hairs. So what happened? The roots are already inside the soil. Soil has got soil particles. Some spaces or gaps are present in the soil. Yes, space or gaps are present in between the soil particles. And these root hairs, yes, they takes the carbon dioxide present in the gap of the soil particles by the process of by the process of diffusion, guys. Important thing is, by the process of diffusion, the root hairs takes the carbon dioxide present in the gaps of the soil particles. Yes. So, how do the plants respire by roots? By root hairs? By diffusion? By where the carbon dioxide is present in the soil particles. Yes. So, first respiratory organs in case of plants, roots. Second, leaves. You all know that. We have already discussed. Leaves. Leaves has got a special structure. I have told you. What is that special structure? 
Yes, the leaves has got pores in it and that pores are called stomata. Yes, so plants respire through stomata present in the leaves and also, also, also in soft stem. Yes, some of the plants have got soft stem and that soft stem has also got pores in it and that pores are called stomata and through that stomata plants takes the carbon dioxide and gives out the carbon dioxide gives out the carbon dioxide no guys and gives out the oxygen yes plants takes the carbon dioxide through the stomata which is present in the leaves and soft cells and gives out the oxygen so now the third one the third respiratory organs in case of your plants and in case of your hard woody plants yes like mango tree is there banyan tree is there they have got hard woody stem or not yes so what happened in this case now they have got bark yes or not the bark is there in that hard woody plants in that bark Another pores are present. That pores are called as your lenticels. Yes, hard woody plant has got lenticels which takes parts in the process of respiration in case of plants. Yes, understood what are the three respiratory organs present in the plants? The first one, root, root hairs. Yes, and the second one in case of leaves and soft, soft stem, what it is? Stomata. And the third one which is present in hard woody plant is lenticels. L-E-N-T-I-C-L-E-S. So by, by the help of these three respiratory organs, plants takes in the carbon dioxide, prepare its food, takes parts in its metabolic processes and gives out the oxygen which we human beings take in. Yes, so these are the three respiratory organs which are present in plants and hence plants also participates in respiration. So now, what about some other animals? We will discuss about ourselves in the last. So first, let me sum of the important respiratory organs of some animals. Like amoeba is there. Unicellular amoeba. How do it respires? It respires through cell membrane. Yes. How do amoeba respires? The respiratory organs in amoeba is cell membrane. I have written over there. Yes, amoeba. Yes, amoeba. Amoeba respires through cell membrane and the same by the diffusion process. So what is the respiratory organs in amoeba, guys? What is it? Cell membrane. Yes. And the second one, your earthworms. You know, from the very childhood we are learning that earthworm's respiratory organ is skin. Yes, so earthworm respires through skin, amoeba respires through cell membrane and fishes and prawns. Yes, no need to tell. You all know that fishes, prawns, aquatic animals have got gills. Yes, they respire through gills. So fishes, prawns, they respire through gills. Insects, guys, grasshoppers, mosquitoes, how do they respire? Insects, spiracles, S-P-I-R-A-C-L-E-S, small holes. Spiracles means small holes or some tubes through which they respire. So some insects like your grasshoppers, your housefly, your mosquito, your cockroach have got tiny holes and that holes are called as your spiracles through which they take parts in respiration process. Yes, next land animals guys. Yes, lungs, of course lungs and some by your skin like frog. Yes, so these are some of the respiratory organs you have to remember. Yes, amoeba, by, by what it respires? Cell membrane. Yes, human beings through lungs. Frogs throw skin, your earthworms throw skin, your fishes and plants throw gills, insects throw spiracles, they are tiny holes. So these are the various respiratory organs guys which you have to remember. Yes, yes, now I hope you have understood about respiration process in 
plants and the various respiratory organs in plants and the various respiratory organs in animals now let's discuss the very interesting concept how respiration takes place in human beings yes how respiration takes place in human beings yes lungs right lungs na okay okay so in my last video we discussed about cellular respiration cellular respiration means it's an internal respiration yes cellular respiration is internal respiration and today what we are going to discuss is all 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 about external respiration yes so today we are going to discuss about external respiration we can broadly divide respiration into two categories that is your internal respiration and external respiration internal respiration means that is your cellular respiration how we extract energy with uh, from mitochondria external respiration involves involves your breathing process in my last video i told you the differentiation between breathing and respiration so today we will be discussing about the breathing process what breathing is guys what is breathing yes simply inhale and exhale yes or no the inhale of oxygen and the exhale of carbon dioxide inhalation of oxygen and the exhalation of carbon dioxide is called as your breathing so yes uh, then how you are going to define it how will you define the uh, breathing process the breathing process is a process by which air rich in oxygen is taken inside the body and the air rich in carbon dioxide is exhaled out of the body so how you are going to define breathing process so it's a process of taking in of air rich in oxygen inside the body and giving out air rich in carbon dioxide outside the body simply inhale of oxygen and exhale of carbon dioxide is called as your breathing yes so who plays the main vital role in breathing process who plays the main vital and important role in breathing process of course some of you will tell nose and some of you will tell lungs both are important both plays the vital role yes so let me tell you from the beginning the respiratory organs the first important point you got to know about what is breathing inhale of oxygen and the exhale of carbon dioxide is called breathing the respiratory organs yes guys the respiratory organs in human beings is lungs yes the main respiratory organs is your lungs in case of your human beings yes lungs is the only organs which helps in inhale and exhale of the carbon dioxide so where is lungs present can anyone tell me where is lungs present yes yes of course chest cavity lungs which is pinkish in color is present in the chest this upper part is called as your chest cavity and the lower part is called as your abdominal cavity remember guys chest cavity or or biological term is thoracic cavity so where is lungs present lungs is present in thoracic cavity where lungs is present lungs is present in thoracic cavity or chest cavity and the lower part is called as your abdominal cavity then how it is separated how chest cavity is separated or how thoracic cavity is separated from the abdominal cavity a curved same muscular structure is present i think you can see guys here this pinkish color one okay this curved like muscular structure called diaphragm what it is called diaphragm d i a p h r a g m note it down diaphragm yes a curved like structure separates the chest cavity or thoracic cavity from abdominal cavity understood guys first point what you have to mention is what breathing is 
respiratory organs is your lungs lungs is present in the thoracic cavity and thoracic cavity gets separated from the abdominal cavity by diaphragm yes the curved like structure is called diaphragm it plays a very important role during inhalation and exhalation understood so thoracic cavity gets separated from the abdominal cavity by 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 diaphragm okay now these are the important things so how breathing actually takes place now i take in the oxygen when you are breathing in the oxygen what happens what happens your chest cavity expands or contracts yes or no when you are taking in the oxygen your chest cavity contracts and your diaphragm moves downward so that it provides enough surface area or enough space to fill the oxygen understood when we are inhaling the oxygen yes our chest cavity contracts or expands and the diaphragm moves downward so that it provides enough space to fill in the oxygen understood and opposite in case of exhaling out the carbon dioxide how when we are giving out the carbon dioxide yes the chest cavity the chest cavity relaxes and the diaphragm comes to its original position so that we can exhale the carbon dioxide yes guys once again i am telling you how the breathing process takes place so when we are inhaling the oxygen the chest cavity expands or contracts and the diaphragm moves downward to provide enough space to fill in the oxygen yes and when we are exhaling out the carbon dioxide the chest cavity relaxes the thoracic cavity relaxes and the diaphragm moves to its original position so that we can give out the carbon dioxide and this is what the process of breathing takes place i hope you understand yes so guys lungs are there understood these lungs are generally what it is layered by two membranes and that two membranes is called as pleura p l e u r a yes so where is lungs present thoracic cavity lungs is covered by a membrane and what is that membrane called pleura yes it's a very thin membrane lungs is surrounded by a very thin membrane and that thin membrane is called as pleura p l e u r a so lungs is surrounded by a very thin membrane what is that thin membrane called pleura understood guys what it is called pleura again the lungs are kept inside rib cage yes you can when you are going to touch it you can feel the ribs yes yes or no you can feel the ribs or not so the lungs are present by rib cage inside the rib cage yes guys lungs pres are the main respiratory organs it's present in the thoracic cavity it is surrounded by a very thin membrane which is called as pleura and it is inside the rib cage and the chest cavity is separated from the abdominal cavity by diaphragm and i have told you how breathing takes place now what are the various organs what are the various respiratory organs which involves in the process of your respiration yes the first one is your nostrils yes the various respiratory organs which involves in the process of breathing or which involves in the process of respiration is the first one is your nostrils yes the first one is your nostrils the then the air passes to nasal chamber or nasal passage third one it passes to pharynx then comes your larynx then comes your trachea then comes your bronchi or bronchioles 
and then comes your alveoli and finally blood cells. Yes, it's a flow chart. It's a flow chart how air passes inside our body. The first nostril, of course, from nose, we breathe in nostrils. Then the air moves into the nasal chamber. Then comes your pharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchi or bronchioles, alveoli and blood cells. One by one we will be discussing it. You can see the picture over here. Yes. So it's nose, nostrils. Yes. Nasal, pa pa nasal passage, pharynx, larynx. All the, all the things are mentioned in this picture in the human respiratory system. So let's begin with the nose. Of course, we breathe in oxygen through nose. Yes, we breathe in the oxygen through our nose. Nose in our term is called as your nostrils. Yes, and it's the external opening. Of course, it is outside. Yes, it's outside in our face. So it's the external opening. The nostrils are the external opening through which we take in the oxygen. Yes, so we take in the oxygen from the nostril, the air or the oxygen now passes into our nasal chamber or nasal passage. Yes, you can see this hole under that hole, what happened? Nasal passage is there or nasal chamber is there. And this nasal chamber, yes, this nasal chamber has got hairs in it. You can, you can observe it. Yeah, our nose inside the nose, what happened? Hairs are there or not? That hairs helps in removing all the germs when we are inhaling the oxygen. Yes, these helps in removing the germs or dirty things which are present in the oxygen while we are, are in while we are inhaling the oxygen. So in the nasal press, uh, nasal chamber, what happened? Hairs are present and it is lined by mucous membrane. The inside of the nasal chamber is lined by your mucous membrane which secretes mucus. You all have observed that when you are suffering from cold, you secrete mucus or not. And that mucus is also very useful because the germs will stick to that mucus. Yes, so when from the nostril, when we are inhaling the oxygen, yes, so it passes through the nasal passage or nasal chamber. The nasal chamber has got the, what, hairs in it and it is lined by mucous membrane which secretes the mu mucus which helps in cleaning the dirt particles which we inhale while inhaling the oxygen. Then it moves to pharynx, guys. P-H-A-R-Y-N-X. Pharynx. It's actually a very short vertical tube and it's about 12 centimeter in size. Pharynx is a short vertical tube which pharynx is a short vertical tube which is 12 centimeter in length and it, it is lined by lymphatic tissue which is also useful in killing the bacteria which is present in the air guys. Yes, pharynx is a tube like structure. And it is about 12 centimeter in length and it is lined by lymphatic tissue which is useful in killing the bacteria in the air guys. Yes and here what happens now the foot pipe and the air pipe. Yes the foot pipe and the air pipe crosses and moves separate ways. Yes guys so pharynx is an important place there. Yes what is pharynx guys? Pharynx is a tube-like structure, 12 cm in length and the inside of the pharynx is made up of lymphatic tissues and that tissues what happen kills the bacteria because tonsils is present in pharynx guys. Yes, tonsils are present in pharynx and which helps in killing the bacteria. And this is the place where both the food pipe and wind pipe crosses each other and moves in the separate direction. Yes, now let's, for nostril done, nasal chamber done, pharynx done, yes, pharynx are again of two types, nasopharynx and oropharynx, nasopharynx means for air, for the passage of air, oropharynx means for the passage of the food guys, yes, remember pharynx is an important place over here, pharynx, tube like, 12 centimeter, 
tonsils present made up of lymphatic tissues kills the bacteria yes and both food pipe and wind pipe meets over here crosses each other and moves in separate directions two types of pharynx nasopharynx and oropharynx nasopharynx is meant for yes for air and oropharynx for the food yes then move on to larynx larynx guys what is larynx yes we have taken the air yes through the oropharynx air is passing and air reaches the larynx there through an opening and that opening is called glottis air from the pharynx enters the larynx through an opening and that opening is called as your glottis yes the air which is coming from the pharynx na guys that enters into the larynx because in the larynx your vocal cords are present and that that air creates the vibration and helps us in making the sound so air from the pharynx moves into the larynx through an opening and that opening is called as your glottis g l o t t i s glottis don't forget air from the pharynx moves into the larynx through an opening and that opening is called as your glottis and you know at that the side of the glottis what happened na your vocal cords are present guys yes in the side of the glottis what happened what happened side of the glottis your vocal cords are produce are present which helps in producing the sound understood guys larynx what is larynx larynx is present and the air which is coming from the pharynx the air which is coming from the pharynx enters into the larynx through the opening and what is that opening called glottis and the side of the glottis what is present vocal cord the air will create vibration in the vocal cord which helps us to speak which helps in producing the sound guys this is a very important structure present larynx and both the side of the glottis your vocal cords are present which helps in producing the sound <clears throat> and in the larynx in the glottis what happen epiglottis a muscular flap like structure is present which prevents the entry of the food in wind pipe and air in food pipe sometimes it happens now while you are eating you start coughing why does that happen why does that happen suddenly your food moves into your air pipe and that's why you start coughing vigorously so to prevent this a muscular flap like structure is present near larynx that is called epiglottis e p i g l o t t i s understood the air moves from nasal chamber to pharynx then to larynx then comes the important structure called trachea or it is also called as your wind pipe yes so this is what trachea can you see it it's in red color guys so this is called as your trachea it's about 12 cm in length trachea or wind pipe like we are having food pipe to move the air we have got wind pipe or air pipe the scientific term is trachea t r a c h e a trachea trachea is 12 cm in length and 2.5 cm in width yes after larynx comes your trachea and it is present in front of esophagus esophagus guys remember where we have discussed in human digestive system yes food pipe remember esophagus which helps in slipping down the food so this 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 trachea which is 12 cm in length 2.5 cm in width is present in front of the esophagus yes this trachea is present in front of the esophagus and its walls are made up of muscular tissues yes and it is made up of c c shaped cartilages can you see this c shaped cartilages which prevents the trachea from collapsing when there is low air yes guys remember trachea the most important part of the respiratory system trachea or windpipe what is the length 12 cm what is the width 2.5 cm it's made up of muscular tissues and cartilage rings 
Yes, why cartilage rings means, why she shaped rings means, it prevents, it prevents the trachea from collapsing when there is low pressure of air, when there is no air. It, it makes a grip. Yes, you can compare the structure of the trachea with that of your straw. Yes, when you bend the straw, have you seen it is made up of circular like structure. So in the same manner, the trachea is present in front of the esophagus, 12 cm in long, 2.5 cm in width and its wall is made up of your muscular tissues and cartilage which prevents a collapsing as it also secretes mucus. Yes, it has got mucus gland which also secretes mucus. And after trachea, it comes to bronchi. Here comes your bronchia. The distal end, the distal end of the trachea is diverted into two bronchus. Yes, left side of bronchus and right side of bronchus. One enters into the left lungs, another enters into the right lungs, guys. The end of the trachea is diverted into two bronchi. One bronchi enters into the left lungs and another bronchi enters into the right lungs. Yes, so the distal end of trachea is divided into two bronchi and each enters into the lungs, left lungs and right lungs. And these bronchia, what happen? Further divided into secondary bronchi and tertiary. Means further branches are there. Bronchi divided into two enters into the left lungs and right lungs. And each bronchi are further divided into branches like secondary branches, secondary bronchi and tertiary bronchi. And the end of the secondary bronchi, at the end of the secondary bronchi or tertiary bronchi, you can see a balloon-like structure or an air sac-like structure. And that balloon-like structure or that sac-like structure is called as your alveoli. Yes, where the actual exchange of gases takes place. Yes, so after trachea, the end of the trachea or the distal end of the trachea is divided into left bronchi and right bronchi which moves into the left lungs and right lungs. Again, each bronchi are further divided into secondary bronchi and tertiary bronchi. Means branches, further branches. And the end of the secondary or tertiary bronchi, number of balloon-like structure, number of balloon-like or air sac-like structure is present. And that balloon-like or air-like structure is about 0.1 mm in length. So each alveoli sac is very thin. Yes, the alveoli or the balloon-like structure which is present in the bronchioles is 0.1 m in length and it's very thin. It's 0.1 mm in diameter. It's very thin in size. And in humans, about 750 millions of alveoli is present to provide a large surface area for easy exchange of the gases. Understood? So, these alveoli are balloon or sac-like structure, 0.1 mm in diameter and in human beings, 750 million alveoli is present. And these alveoli walls are very thin now. They are very close to the blood cells, blood stream. Yes, their walls are very, very close to the blood capillaries so that the exchange of gases takes place by the process of diffusion. Understood guys? Yes, trachea, once again I will be telling you, nostril, nose, yes, then your nasal passage, it has got hairs and mucous membrane to clean the dirt particles, then moves to your pharynx, yes, it's a 12 cm tube-like structure, and here your foot pipe and air pipes meet and crosses and again moves out to their own direction. It is also lined, it has got tonsils which are made up of lymphatic tissues which kills the bacteria. Oropharynx and nasopharynx, oro for the passage of air and oro for the passage of your 
uh, food and nasal pharynx for the passage of your air. Then comes the larynx. I told you vocal cord is present and the air from the pharynx enters into the lar larynx through an opening called glottis. Again to divide the foot pipe and the wind pipe, epiglottis is present. Then trachea. Where is trachea present? At the upper end of the esophagus. It's made up of cartilage rings. Yes, to prevent from collapsing it during low pressure. Yes, and the end of the trachea is divided into left bronchioles and right bronchioles which moves into left lungs and right lungs which are further branched. Yes, which are further branched and called secondary bronchioles and tertiary bronchioles. And each bronchioles at the end has got seven, near about in human beings, 750, 750 millions of alveoli are present. And that alveoli or air sacs or balloon like structure where the actual exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide takes place. Why? Because the walls of alveoli are very thin and very near to the blood cell and by the process of diffuser, the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide takes place. How many alveoli are there? 750 millions of alveoli are there in human body. This is what the process how we take in and exhale the carbon dioxide. Hope guys you have understood it. Please, please, please go and refer your test book once. Please check the notes what I have written on the board here. Yes and revise it properly. I hope you will be understanding it. Just go through your books, refer the notes and practice the worksheets. Yes guys, hope we will be meeting very soon with yet another important concept. Stay healthy. Bye. See you soon.